Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 25 series, Can We Save the Oakland A's? And thus far, through our first three seasons in Oakland, uh, we haven't been able to save the A's. We've won 77, 75, and now 80 games respectively over those three seasons. So uh, much better than the 50-win team that the A's were in 2023. That being said, we still haven't even sniffed a winning season with these Oakland A's. Fortunately, ownership has not had particularly high expectations or ambitions for us. And we are slowly improving our minor league system. Uh, the goal is to hopefully get through another two or three seasons without completely stinking and losing our job. And then hopefully by that point, the minor leagues will start churning out a couple of major league ready players every year. And if we can get two or three solid major leaguers every year on average, kind of supplement the edges of the roster with some other guys we're still going to likely always be in a situation with these A's where the budgetary and salary limitations are a factor probably only going to be one or two guys on the team that we can really commit to with moderate to high money for the long term but as long as we're kind of churning out some minor leaguers consistently, my hope is that eventually we'll be able to be a consistently competitive team with the A's. Whether or not that actually happens, we'll find out. But uh, I would like to uh, at least see this plan through to potential fruition. But before we start thinking about our plan for this upcoming 2026 to 2027 offseason, time for our annual review of the roster and the beginning of our planning for the offseason. Taking a look at the team statistics, uh, 80 and 82 record was one better than expectations. We were within one game of 500 every month of the year weirdly except for October when we played only four games yet we're still two games below 500 so we were by definition about as average a squad as you can be we finished 10th in the American League in runs scored which was a small improvement from a year ago but we dipped to eighth in runs allowed which was worse than where we were a year ago still have a very good defensive team and we still steal a lot of bases and are average-ish on the base paths overall. As we have uh, each of the last couple off-seasons, likely to have pretty significant turnover on the roster this year. Uh, we brought on several rentals on board before the trade deadline. And we're also just in a situation that once players kind of get past making the minimum, even in those first couple years of arbitration, feels like some guys uh, price themselves out of uh, the ability to be on these Oakland A's. Taking a look at where we are, smallest budget in baseball, smallest payroll in baseball this year. And we're going to need to clear some money off the books uh, through the arbitration process and perhaps uh, trading away some players over the next uh, month and a half or so before free agency to free up money that will hopefully allow us to be at least moderate players in free agency this offseason. Uh, did have healthy scouting and development budgets this year which hopefully will uh, help in the recruitment and development of the prospects that we do have in our system and as we sit here on October 5th minor league system ranked eighth overall and you can see we now have uh looks like seven top 100 prospects so uh we've made a few strides with the farm system thus far over the first two and a half years of this playthrough heading back to our pitching staff uh, mason miller had a very good second half, uh, bounced back from that injury that kept him out for a season and a half. 10-3 and three record with a 3.29 ERA, 
92 strikeouts and 82 innings pitched. He's basically a five-inning starter, but a pretty effective five-inning starter at that. Put up a two-war. If you figure he missed about half the year, prorate that over a whole season, and he's a four-war pitcher. Always going to be someone we worry about with the fragility. Interestingly, coming back uh, fragile and being moved into the rotation from the closer role, his arbitration number has potentially come down. Uh, so we'll definitely be bringing him back next year. The interesting thing is even with that low arbitration number, when we explore a longer-term contract extension, um, he's looking for pretty big money in those out years. He wants an average of almost $10 million a year for a six-year contract, which would entail a little more than his arbitration numbers, followed by $16 million a year. So given that uh, he'll be turning 29 next season and he's fragile physically, probably going to continue taking it year to year with Miller. If we get blown away with an offer for him, we'll certainly consider it. But at 80 and 82, I also kind of feel like we're not that far away from maybe being a team that could get to a winning record and potentially sneak into a wild card sometime over the next couple of years. And certainly our chances of doing that would be enhanced if Miller is on our roster. Jesus Lazardo was a rental, 5-6 uh, and six record, 444 ERA, and he is looking for big-time money, over $20 million a year for eight years, so he will clearly not be back with the Oakland A's next year. Clark Schmidt likely will be 8-11 uh, and 11 with a 4.60 ERA, so with those kind of numbers, he's definitely slipped back a bit. But you look at his Sierra and his war, and he's kind of been exactly what he's always been for us. Making $5.5 million next year, so starting to get fully valued for what he is, which is probably a third or a fourth starter. But on this A's team, he's probably our number two behind Mason Miller at this point. Lucas Giolito was a guy we signed last offseason, and we're probably going to unfortunately be moving on from him. 9-13 and 13 record with a 4.77 ERA. His Sierra was almost a run better, um, so that works in his favor. But the BABIP climbed dramatically this year. His stuff has fallen off, and his uh, velocity has really fallen off. When we uh, signed him as a free agent, he was still throwing in the mid-90s. Now just uh, nine, ten months later after we signed him, he can barely hit 90 miles an hour at the age of 32. So we're probably going to decline that team option for $5 million next year, figuring he's looking more like a replacement level type guy. Doesn't mean he won't be back with us, but he's not going to be back with us for $5 million in all probability. And Luis Garcia, another guy who uh, will not be back with us. We had big expectations for him. We're really excited when he signed as a minor league free agent with us. But he ended up going 7-14 and 14 with an ERA of close to 5. Another guy whose Sierra was materially better than his ERA, but he is looking for uh, almost nine, almost $10 million a year over three years. Uh, he's going to be turning 30 shortly. For what he is, I don't think the A's can afford to be spending $9, $10 million a year on him. So honestly, Miller and Schmidt are probably the only two guys who were in the rotation as of the end of the season that will certainly be back with us in the rotation next year. And I guess I should probably use my language and my words a little more carefully. Miller and Schmidt are also probably two of the more valuable players that we have on our team, so uh, I can't say they'll certainly be back with us next year. If someone blows us away with an offer... Or if uh, we find somebody we really want and need for the team and a Miller or a Schmidt will help us get the deal done, uh, I can't rule out including them in a deal. But uh, they're certainly the two who at this point have the strongest possibility of being back with us next year. 
Robert Stevenson uh, did a nice job as our closer after we brought him on board in a trade with Seattle. 17 saves over the second half of the year, 318 ERA. Unfortunately for us, he's looking for $13 million a year for two years, certainly out of our price range. Uh, same thing may end up happening going forward with Ian Hamilton, who was our closer before he got hurt, and then Stevenson kind of took the role from him. Saved 18 games this year with an ERA of close to four. Set to make about $2.8 million in arbitration. Not a ton of money, but still um, something that we have to think about. So uh, certainly a better probability that Hamilton will be back than Stevenson. But I don't think it's guaranteed. Can talk similarly about Gabe Spire, who's uh, set to make a very similar $2.8 million in arbitration. And he really regressed this year. His ERA was up almost two runs a game, or over two runs a game. Sierra inched up also as well, and he was below replacement level for us as a lefty out of the pen. Uh, still looking at his ratings, seems like he should be a pretty effective major league pitcher. Uh, just kind of question whether between Spire and Hamilton we can afford to spend about $5.5 million on a couple of relievers. Josh Spores will be back, a guy we claimed on waivers. Um, he's set to make $2.4 million in arbitration, and he had a really nice year for us, 325 ERA over 63 and two-thirds innings. Um, above average in terms of his ERA plus, a little above average in terms of his FIP minus. The Sierra was a bit high, but uh, he, still a guy who throws in the high 90s, still his outstanding stuff and a nice three-pitch arsenal, given that he's set to make about four or $500,000 less than Hamilton and Spire. I tend to think Spores will be back with us. Um, question those first two. J.P. Sears, uh, another guy that we're going to have an interesting decision on. He's set to make about $4.4 million this year. He was an all-star for us. We ended up demoting him to the bullpen after we traded for... Lizardo, um, but he had a fine year, 3.42 ERA, 1.6 war, and he's been a pitcher who's improved his performance with us each of the three years that he's been with us, at least in terms of his ERA. The $4.4 million is certainly expensive, but when you consider that Giolito's around 5, Lizardo's looking for 20, and Garcia's looking for about 10, potentially bringing Sears back for 4.2, 4.3 million is something we'll think about. Chase Lee will definitely be back, a Rule 5 draft pick from a couple years ago, still set to make the major league minimum, put up a 350 ERA for us uh, in 54 innings pitched out of the bullpen this year. Kevin Ginkle uh, likely will not be back. A rental we brought on board, headed to free agency. He was solid for us with a 386 ERA over 21 innings pitched, um, but at 32 years old, and with the fact that he is looking for about $7.5 million a year, hard to imagine that Ginkle will be back in the bullpen for the A's next year. Colby Allard, left-handed pitcher, headed to free agency. Spent some time in the rotation this year as well as in the bullpen. The 7-8 and eight record, the ERA ballooned to 5, and he was slightly below replacement level. He's looking for a little less than $4 million a year, but wants a three-year guarantee. I tend to think that we'll be bringing either the lefty Sears or the lefty Allard back to potentially be a fourth or fifth starter for us. I don't think we'll bring them both back. Nick Frasso, another former Rule 5 pick, another guy set to make the Major League minimum next year. Still his two option years left. Uh, had a 446 ERA during his major league tenure this year, also a 439 ERA in AAA. 
given that he's got options and he's making the major league minimum, he'll be in the mix to be a arm out of our bullpen next year. And then Mitch Spence is a guy who missed the entire season. Uh, he did just heal up, of course, right as the season was ending. So uh, spent the entire year out with that torn UCL. Uh, we're going to try to get an updated scouting report on him right now. But he um, set to make about $2.2, 2 next year if we sign him before he gets to arbitration. Still has that captain personality. Tend to think um, unless our scouting report comes back on him and uh, we think his ratings have changed materially, he'll likely be back in the rotation for us next year. Good to see that he's still normal injury proneness. So likely we'll have Miller, Schmidt, and Spence back in the rotation. As I mentioned, Sears or Allard possibly with them but feel like uh, it would not be the worst thing in the world to add a good starting pitcher through the trade market or free agency if there's any opportunities for us to do that this offseason. Turning now to our position players and similar to our pitchers, we're likely to have a fair amount of turnover here as well. One player that we hopefully won't be turning over for some time is the catcher Drake Baldwin. Uh, we traded away O'Neill Cruz to pick him up. Liked that left-handed bat against right-handed pitching. Think he can be pretty effective in a platoon. And he was pretty good with us. Hit 288 with 12 doubles, two triples, two homers, and 139 at-bats. Put up a 129 WRC plus and a 1.6 war in just 41 games with us. Like his defense, and uh, we did sign him to an extension that could keep him in Oakland for the bulk of his career. If uh, he can be an above average offensive player, even if it's only playing 110, 120 games a year against righties, with that glove, uh, I think he's a pretty useful player. Who's going to be with him next year is a question. Uh, could be one of the next three guys that we talk about. Could be somebody different entirely. Uh, Will Banfield, we have signed to a medium-term contract, but it's not a contract that would be that difficult to trade away. Love his defense. Uh, he spent most of the year in AAA where he put up just a 78 WRC+. Plus. We brought him up uh, towards the end of September, and he went one for six. Right-handed hitter, um, so if we only played him against lefties and platooned him with Baldwin, there's part of me that thinks that his excellent defense could justify that. The other two options we have should provide more offense, but not as good defense. Shea Langoliers. Uh, spent a fair amount of time in AAA this year learning how to play first base and left field a bit to make himself a little more versatile defensively. And he was productive um, in 89 at-bats when we brought him up with 8 homers, 18 ribbies, and a 124 WRC+. Plus. The issue with Langoliers is that he's set to make about $3.5 million next year. Um, Similar to Mr. Banfield, looks like he could be somewhat productive, perhaps, playing against left-handed pitching as a catcher. And uh, he's more than competent defensively, like his arm. It's hard to imagine both of these guys will be back with us next year, but it's certainly possible one of them will be. And then Tyler Stevenson was actually the guy who was our regular catcher against left-handed pitching this year. And uh, he did a pretty darn good job for us in that role. Put up a 115 WRC plus over 177 at-bats. Uh, war of almost one. He's a backup catcher. He's respectable defensively, good personality, and a guy whose bat against left-handed pitching is certainly better than Banfield, and I would prefer it um, to Langoliers. So the best hitter of the bunch 
Uh, the issue is that Stevenson's looking for almost $9 million a year over four years, which I think uh, rules him out from consideration to come back as someone who we would only intend to be playing a couple times a week against left-handed pitchers. Turning to our infielders, and we'll start with uh, one of the two players that we signed to a medium-term deal last offseason before he had really proven himself in the major leagues. And uh, Tyler Soderstrom is the one of the two guys that we did that with who really worked out well for us this year. Batted 291 with 27 homers and 82 ribbies and 488 at-bats. Also slammed 33 doubles put up a 135 WRC plus and a 2.9 war for us pri playing primarily at first base. He's a guy who we envision only being in the lineup against right-handed pitching, uh, but he did a good enough job there that uh, the deal that we signed him to looks like it could be a pretty good bargain for us, especially considering that he still does have the versatility to play catcher. Not particularly well, but it it's not the worst thing in the world to have that third catcher on the roster in case an emergency arises. So Soderstrom, uh, the best offensive season of anyone on our squad this year, and he'll be back next year. Austin Gauthier split the year between AAA and the majors. Uh, he still has two option years left, so could certainly foresee him in a similar role next year. Hit below a 151 at-bats in the majors with a negative 8 WRC+, plus, and he was more than half a run below replacement level, even though he only played in 16 games. So although we like his defensive versatility, we like his ability to draw some walks, uh, certainly question whether he is an important member of our team for the future, but given that he's making the major league minimum and he's got options, he'll likely be a part of the organization in less... Uh, he somehow helps us clinch a trade for someone who uh, moves the needle more than we believe he will. Daryl Hernandez will likely be back with us next year as our second baseman, um, still set to make the major league minimum. Uh, very versatile defensive player and a pretty high quality defensive infielder. Led the American League with 634 at-bats this year. 34 doubles, 11 homers, 79 ribbies, scored 84 runs. All added up to only a 91 WRC+, plus, but given his good defense, he still put up a 2.9 war. Making the major league minimum uh, will certainly be around next year. Question um, how long he'll be around with us. Looking for over $10 million a year, uh, so he definitely wants to get paid pretty decently for some of his free agent years. At this point, we'll probably take it year to year with Mr. Hernandez. Heimer Candelario uh, picked him up as a rental, and he kind of stunk. 200 batting average, over 145 at-bats, and he is looking for big bucks, $12 million a year over four years, so... Candy will not be back with us next year. Unlikely that Gio Urshela will be either. Uh, did hit 292 over 209 at-bats, 104 WRC+. Plus. Uh, like the captain personality, he was pretty useful for us, playing primarily against left-handed pitchers. Only looking for $2.4 million a year over three years, so it's not inconceivable that he could be in the mix to come back. But we do have a fair amount of young infielders in the organization who are kind of stuck at AAA, so it may make sense to let the older guys like Candelario, Urshela, and even Nick Ahmed move on this year to make room for the youngsters. Ahmed ended up getting hurt right at the end of the year, uh, hit just 200 and 456 at-bats, uh, less than a win above replacement, just a 44 WRC+. Plus. Uh, the hope is that Mr. Cawley is back and healthy next year and he can take over as our everyday shortstop. Uh, he's not quite as good defensively as Ahmed, but he's a lot younger, uh, a lot cheaper, and we think he could be potentially a better offensive player. He certainly has better speed. 
Uh, we've got a team option with Ahmed at $1.5 million. He's actually a player who we've gotten a fair amount of trade offers for uh, over the course of the season. So it's not inconceivable that uh, before we get to free agency and before we have to officially decide on extending his uh, option or declining his option, that maybe we'll use him as a piece in a trade with somebody to bring on someone who hopefully is a, a little more part of our medium to long-term plans than the 36-year-old Slick Nick is at this point. Turning last but certainly not least to our outfielders, and we're going to have uh, some interesting decisions to make here. Dominic Canzone uh, was pretty productive for us. Started the year in AAA, but due to some injuries, he came up and he ended up in the lineup every day against right handers for us. Hit 263, 19 homers, 23 doubles, and 403 at bats. Put up a 113 WRC plus and a 1.1 war. Still has two option years left, still making the major league minimum. I don't think there's a guarantee that he's going to be on the 26-man roster next year, but uh, the way he hit this year against right-handed pitchers certainly puts him in the mix. Estuary Ruiz uh, led the American League in steals for a third consecutive year, although it was by far his least efficient year on the base paths. Uh, 46 stolen bases, 12 caught stealing. Batting average dipped to 239. Did still have 29 doubles and a career-best 10 dingers, uh, 96 WRC+, plus and a 2.3 war. He's a very good defensive center fielder, uh, set to make about $4.5 million. Given his speed, given his pretty solid defense, I think we bring him back for next year at that number. Uh, whether he is a long-term Oakland A is still to be determined. Brayan Buelvis uh, should be in the mix uh, for the roster next year. Has option years left, making the major league minimum. Struggled at first. Uh, we sent him down to Las Vegas, and then he was pretty good when he came back up in September. Finished the year with a 272 average and was league average in terms of his WRC+. Plus. Uh, he's a right-handed guy who certainly looks uh, better against left-handed pitching. So it's not inconceivable if we want to try to save some money that there could be a Canzone and Vuelvis platoon in left or right field. Lawrence Butler, uh, I mentioned Tyler Soderstrom before, is the guy we signed to a medium-term contract that really worked out. Lawrence Butler, we did the same thing with this offseason, and uh, the success of this contract is TBD. Batting profile looks solid. Defense looks solid. The speed looks solid. Uh, but it all added up to an 89 WRC plus for us this year. 234 average. Did hit 16 homers and steal 17 bases, but only a 1.3 war. Uh, he's also making more money than Soderstrom. He'll be back with us next year. Um, hopefully he'll be more effective offensively than he was this past season. And then the big decision we're going to have this uh, offseason is Anthony Santander. Had a really good year for us his first year in Oakland. Um, not quite as good this year. Only a 91 WRC+. Plus. The batting average fell 21 points to 238. He hit 17 fewer home runs than a year ago. 92 ribbies, um, I believe, still led the team. I'm pretty sure that was more than uh, Soderstrom. But um, we've got a team option for $9 million next year. And if he hits like this, um, $9 million for a corner outfielder slash DH who's below average offensively is not something that I think we can afford for the Oakland A's. So if he has any trade value when uh, we get past the playoffs and into the offseason proper, he's someone who we could conceivably be moving on from. 
And if we move on from Santander, that probably increases the chance that we could end up with a Canzone and Buelvis platoon. Uh, if Santander does come back, we're going to have Ruiz back. We're going to have Butler back. Make it a little harder for both Canzone and Buelvis to be on next year's roster in that situation. And before we take a quick look at our minor league system, we'll sim through the first round of the playoffs. Uh, the Rangers and the Orioles facing off in a wild card series. The Guardians and the Twins in a battle of AL Central teams. Diamondbacks and the Reds in the NL in one wild card. And then the Brewers against the Braves in the final of the four wild card series. And before we've even gotten into those wild card series, uh, some bad news on a player that we didn't talk about because he was on the IL, AJ Puck. Uh, this is a trade that we made with Cincinnati almost a year ago. Uh, he ended up uh, missing a good chunk of this year, just suffered a setback in his recovery from a fractured elbow, going to be out another eight to nine months. Um, I did envision, given the fact that the Reds kept the majority of his contract for the next couple years, that we would keep him around. But if there's any trade value at this point for him, um, perhaps it's something that we should consider because he's another guy whose velocity um, has just massively dropped off, according to our scout um, was thrown in the high 90s a year ago, was thrown in the mid 90s when we picked him up, and now he's struggling to get into the low 90s. Who knows what he's going to actually look like after he recovers from that fractured elbow. And I guess since we are talking about the injured list, there are a couple other guys that we'll need to make some decisions on this offseason. Uh, Steven Matz, we signed him as a minor league free agent. He was uh, pretty solid in limited action with Oakland this year before uh, he suffered a couple of injuries, most recently shoulder inflammation when he was down in AAA for a rehab assignment. He's a free agent. He's 35 years old. Hard to imagine we'll be bringing him back. Sean Bouchard, uh, we picked up to hopefully boost our offense against left-handed pitching. And he was not successful doing that with just an 87 WRC+. Plus. Tore some ankle limit ligaments, uh, set to make almost $2.8 million next year. Uh, I guess he could be in the mix with Buelvas to be a platoon player for us against left-handed pitching. But with the money Bouchard is set to make, um, Buelvas is probably the one who's more likely to be on our team. And then we might as well also check in on Cameron Cawley, since I mentioned we're viewing him as our starting shortstop next year. Uh, the 23-year-old did start the season as our starting shortstop when Ahmed was hurt. Uh, performed so poorly, hitting just a buck 89 with a 25 WRC plus that we sent him down to AAA for some more seasoning. Uh, unfortunately, as of uh, June 17th, he broke a bone in his elbow and missed the rest of the season. So unfortunately, missed out on some potential development uh, time for Cauley. That said, you look at his speed, you look at his glove, and you look at where his bat is now, and it's hard to not think that on paper he's a better player than Ahmed, uh, which makes me think we're likely to pencil Cauley in as our shortstop, hope that he recovers well from that broken bone in his elbow, and as I noted, maybe see what... Uh, if anything, we can get for Nick Ahmed in a trade in the coming weeks. And we've talked in previous episodes about uh, some of the little quirks with OOTP25 that have been a little frustrating to us. Um, touched upon it with uh, guys like Puck and Giolito that it seems like uh, pitchers decline very quickly in some cases when they get into just their early 30s, which seems a bit aggressive to me. Uh, another thing in the new game that I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around is uh, some players just kind of retiring a little bit early. You can see we had some talented players in AAA this year, but 
Clayton Beater, only 28 years old, had spent uh, time in the past two seasons, or two of the past three seasons up in Oakland, um, was still making the major league minimum, um, which being $740,000 a year, um, it's hard to imagine too many 28-year-olds who still have options um, making that choice, but um, I guess they need to clear out some space for some of the newer, younger people, uh, some veterans who were on our AAA team like Lance Lynn and Merrill Kelly, as well as Jose Abreu, also retired. And the Orioles, the Twins, the Diamondbacks, and the Braves were all the winners of the Wild Card Series. So before we move on to the LCS, let's take a quick look at some of the top prospects in our organization. As I noted earlier, we have made some progress over the uh, two and a half years we've been playing here. Uh, minor league system now in the top 10 in baseball, who was one of the worst when we took over. Our top prospects still at our international complex, Birch Hand, Al Brighton, signed him as an international free agent uh, this past winter. Uh, love the personality, love the potential bat, don't love the defense, and really don't like the lack of speed, don't love the fragility either, but uh, still think that that bat could be very special for us down the line. We've already talked about Cauley. Max Muncy is uh, one of those infielders we mentioned who's pretty close to being ready for the majors. Uh, spent this past year in AAA where he put up a 133 WRC plus for us. Pretty versatile defensive player. The bat is borderline uh, and it still has some development that needs to take place but he's viewed at this point as the number 52 prospect in baseball and certainly think when we think about some of the older players that we talk through, whether it was Nick Ahmed, whether it was Candelaria, whether it was Urshela, probably makes sense to see what Muncie can do at the major league level at some point in the not-so-distant future. Noah Franco uh, was a second round pick of ours in 2025. Uh, we were pretty excited when he dropped in the draft to us in the second round because he was a guy that we actually looked at in the first round. Uh, didn't have a great professional debut this year, batted just 210 in rookie ball. Did have eight home runs and 162 at bats, though. Um, he's also a potential two-way guy, although really much more of a hitter than a pitcher. And you can see uh, our manager down in AAA, or down in rookie ball, didn't even end up using him at all as a pitcher. And um, that's kind of fine with us. I don't think that's really his future. Juan Rodas, a uh, former international free agent signing, made his rookie debut this year. Hit just 212 in 198 at bats for our DSL team. He was 17 years old, though. Uh, Might have brought him up a little bit early, but uh, wanted to at least get him hopefully starting to develop uh, like the glove and think that contact and power combination could be pretty interesting for a potential middle infielder. Luis Pera. Another international free agent signing um, promoted to A-ball this year where he certainly struggled. 6.60 ERA over 60 innings pitched after he dominated in the DSL um, in his introduction to professional baseball a year earlier. Uh, hopefully he'll be a little better the second time around in A-ball next season and in a perfect world, hopefully we'll get him promoted at least to high A at some point during the season. And then our last top 100 prospect is Duncan Marston, starting pitcher who we picked fourth overall um, first year of this playthrough in 2024. He uh, spent the year in A-ball and similar to Pera, was not particularly impressive with a 5.60 ERA over 138 innings pitched. Uh, the 172 strikeouts was very impressive. The 48 walks is borderline acceptable, 
The fact that he gave up 41 home runs in just 138 and a third innings is the big issue with him. He is a fly ball pitcher, and you can see uh, he's got to improve his ability to keep the ball in the ballpark if he's going to have any choice, any chance of um, meeting the potential that the uh, scouts see in him as a top 100 prospect. And the A's organization has also five additional prospects ranked in the top 200. Cruz Schoolcraft was our 10th overall pick in 2025, made his professional debut this year as a pitcher. Uh, not great, 5.08 ERA with 33 walks and eight home runs allowed over just 44 and a third innings in rookie ball. As a hitter, he's got a lot of improvement to make as well. Batted just 111 in 190 at-bats. Did have six homers and 28 ribbies, but a negative 3 WRC plus and a minus 2.6 war. Certainly not what we're hoping for. Uh, you look at his pitching ratings, and it certainly seems like the control is moving in the wrong direction, which uh, could prevent him from reaching the heights that we think he could have. Um, that said, you know, part of the reason we picked him up was that uh, he has potentially excellent power. Um, the question is whether he's going to make enough contact and avoid striking out enough to make, take advantage of that. Uh, there was some very small chance when we picked him up that he could be the um, next version of a Shohei Otane or a Babe Ruth. Um, looking at his profile right now, I think that's unlikely. Uh, hopefully we can still turn him into a useful major leaguer, um, even if it's not a two-way guy ultimately. Hopefully there will be one side of the ball where he ends up uh, above average at. Luis Lara, a right fielder, picked him up in a trade with Milwaukee uh, about a year and a half ago at this point. Split the year between high A and double A, um, was a league average player in double A, was very effective in high A. Looks like a pretty good potential contact hitter, decent speed, decent glove. Um, looks like we've also gotten some pretty good um, development of him since uh, we picked him up. His eye has improved and his uh, contact, he's basically reached what we think his full potential is at this point. So... Uh, Probably not a huge part of our future, but at 21 years old, switch hitting outfielder who can play a competent center fielder with some speed. If we do end up moving on from Estuary Ruiz at some point, uh, Lara could conceivably be our center fielder of the not too distant future. Miles Naylor, uh, another guy who we inherited in the organization. Basically missed the entire year with a torn PCL, uh, hit 333, but given that it was only over 15 at-bats at high A before he got hurt, not sure how significant that really is. Looks like he could be an interesting hitter if he fully develops. Uh, does have high work ethic, which hopefully will help him recover from that injury and continue to develop. Jai Watterson a international free agent signing from 2025. Uh, improved a bit in his second go-round in the, the DSL this year with a 4.56 ERA, over 51 and a third innings pitched. Um, he'll be turning 19 in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll probably have a question with him whether we promote him to A ball in the spring or uh, maybe let him start in rookie ball for half a year, hopefully perform well there, and then maybe earn the pro pro promotion to a ball after that and then brian rincon kind of fits the same model as max muncie and cameron Cawley. some of these young infielders it's probably getting close to give a chance to uh the 22 year old split the year between double a and triple a was pretty much a league average offensive player at both levels another very versatile and pretty high quality defensive player uh, similar to some of the other guys we've talked about, the question is how much he's going to hit. does seem like he's got a very good ability to draw walks. He had an on-base percentage over 400 in AAA. Fragile as far as his injury proneness, but he is a switch-hitting 
middle infielder um, who looks like he's got a pretty similar profile, uh, a little better against right-handed pitching, but um, could be in the mix to be an infielder for us at the major league level next year, particularly if we move on from uh, several of those older infielders. And two other guys to mention, uh, although they're not on the top prospects list. Uh, Brett Beatty, who we traded for last offseason, spent the whole year in AAA, uh, put up a 119 WRC+. plus. He is uh, now out of options after this season, so I think it's unlikely he'll be part of our organization next year. But Tyler Black is a guy, uh, don't worry, I don't know where you live, has mentioned in the comments, and... Black kind of fits into a similar spot on our roster as a couple of the guys that we were just talking about, um, Max Muncy and Brian Rincon, in that he is a versatile defensive player. He's got some speed. think the bat could be useful. Left-handed hitter, um, although interestingly, he looks like he's probably a little more effective against left-handed pitching. Put up a 147 WRC plus for us on AAA this year, making the major league minimum. Um, he's also out of option years as well. I think it's more likely that um, Black um, than Beatty could be in the mix to be on our roster next year. And given that they're both out of options, um, probably either going to have them on the 26-man roster or uh, just move on from them before um, before free agency this year, so we're not guaranteeing them a contract at the major league level. And with that uh, brief review of our minor league system complete, we'll uh, go through another round of the playoffs before we take a look at some of the uh, top prospects in the draft in the IAFA that we've uh, talked about with many of our viewers over the past couple seasons. And it was all chalk in the National League where the division winning Dodgers and Cubs who had the first round buys moved on to the league championship series. But we've got a couple of wild card teams in the ALCS. Uh, the Orioles took out the Mariners and the Twins took out the Red Sox. And I've lied to you once again. We're actually going to play another round of the playoffs before we dig into some of the prospects that we know and love. But the reason why is we'll give you a little bit of bonus coverage here. The international free agent class was just announced yesterday. Our A's will be one of the teams with $5.7 million to spend. Uh, doesn't look, at least in terms of our scouts' initial valuation, as crazily top-heavy as some of the past IAFA classes have been in this playthrough. Uh, might be a little more balanced there. Um, there's a couple interesting pitchers as well. One guy uh, that I'm going to show you now, I... Um, have probably already fallen in love with and you can see uh, just through one session at our international practice we've already built a strong relationship with him and we've got our scouting accuracy up to average shortstop Alejandro Landin love the personality with the high leadership work ethic and intelligence uh, looks like he could be a pretty solid defensive player doesn't have much speed, uh, but potentially really good bat with um, well above average contact, well above average home run power, um, a decent enough eye, and uh, the gap power is fine. Although, again, without great speed, not going to generate a ton of extra base hits. But a, a switch hitting infielder um, who can play probably just about any position except catcher on the field if you needed him to. It's probably going to be someone I'm going to have a hard time saying no to come January, but there are a lot of players for us to scout and get to know better between now and then. Um, as I noted, we're only average in terms of our scouting accuracy on Landine. Uh, who knows what we'll think of him when we get through all of our scouting, but certainly right now I'd say he's the early favorite for someone we may be interested in trying to 
spend some money on in a few months. And we had a couple five-game routes in the league championship series. Uh, the Orioles took out the Twins four games to one, and the Cubs took out the Dodgers four games to one. So Baltimore and Chicago will be facing off here in the 2026 World Series. And you may remember that the Cleveland Guardians took out the Atlanta Braves in seven games in each of the first two World Series in this uh, fantasy world that I'm living in right now in both 2024 and 2025. So we will have a new world champion here in 2026. But before we find out who wins the World Series this year, uh, finally going to stop teasing you and we're going to talk about a few of the uh, players that we've looked at in the draft and international amateur free agency over these past few seasons, see how their development is going. Juan Sanabria, uh, international free agent signing from almost two years ago, number seven prospect in all of baseball. He was tempting to us as a pitcher. Uh, we ended up going in a different direction with Mr. Rodas and some others uh, who we've already talked about. One and two with a 5.01 ERA this season in his second year in rookie ball. So still a lot of work to do, uh, but still think uh, he has very high-end talent. And uh, he's still only 18 years old, despite the fact that he's already spent two full years playing professional baseball. Matt Scott, a college pitcher out of Stanford, who uh, we looked at this, um, I guess, a year and a half ago in the draft, uh, split the year between rookie ball, A ball, and high A ball, and uh, mixed results, uh, pretty effective at rookie ball, kind of middling in A ball, and he struggled a bit in high A. Uh, so for a guy who's almost 23 years old, um, hasn't necessarily progressed through the organization of the Braves as quickly as you might have hoped uh, but still looks as he did when we first looked at him like he could be a pretty solid back of the rotation type starter we thought he had a very high floor when we looked at him but perhaps not the uh, greatest ceiling in the world and still kind of looks that way when we look at his ratings Cade Adambide, a draft pick uh, who ended up going in the sixth round of our first draft in 2024, still in rookie ball. He's 21 years old now. Um, looks like he could still be a respectable offensive player for a catcher, has some positive personality traits, and looks like he could be good defensively, but thus far has not shown much with the bat in rookie ball. Byron Dervish, First baseman, international free agent signing in 2025, the number six prospect in baseball. That off-the-charts power was intriguing, I know, to some of you. was intriguing to me as well. Did hit eight homers and 40 ribbies in his first 238 at-bats in rookie ball this year, primarily as a 17-year-old. So the Astros organization had uh, no concerns about uh, getting him playing against the pros early. Joe Edwards is a guy who uh, many of you thought I should have taken with the fourth overall pick this past year. He ended up going fifth overall right behind us. Uh, was more of a financial issue than any criticism of Edwards. Uh, the 19-year-old did not end up uh, playing pro ball this year uh, with the way the timing of the minor league works. I am going to actually change one thing with that, so I might as well mention it now. I am going to extend both the uh, Arizona and the Florida Rookie Leagues as well as the DSL. Going to turn those seasons from, I think, about 55 to 60 game seasons to 80 game seasons in the off season this year. Um, going to keep them starting at the same date, so it likely means that we're only going to be able to maybe get about 20 games out of the players that we're picking up in the draft. Uh, but I would like to do a little bit to kickstart the development of the players who are uh, picked in the 
amateur draft each year rather than having them sit around for almost a year before they play any organized professional baseball. So I do plan on uh, making that change to the settings this offseason. David Orta was a international free agent signing I was incredibly tempted by this uh, past offseason. I ended up going with uh, the popular selection from the viewers, which was Al Brighton. Uh, Orta made his debut in rookie ball with the Reds organization this year, uh, hit six home runs and 243 at-bats. As I noted, viewed as the number four prospect in baseball, really like that contact and power combination and think he could be a pretty darn good third baseman at some point in the future. Bryce Rayner uh, is a guy who's already been traded away. He was in the draft, uh, ended up going 15th overall in 2024. So we thought about potentially taking him. He's played rookie ball the last couple years, a potential two-way guy. Has not been impressive as a pitcher, as you can see, with 5.17 and 6.62 earned run averages. Uh, did improve his batting average from 176 to 221 this past year and hit 10 home runs at 154 at-bats. So still a guy who uh, looks like he could become a useful Major League player if everything works out well. And last but not least, Galterio Mancina, uh, international amateur free agent who uh, we were very tempted by back in 2025. And uh, he had a pretty good year in rookie ball this year as an 18-year-old. Hit 286 with 11 doubles, 11 homers, 238 at-bats. Put up a 125 WRC+. Plus. Would expect to see him in A-ball uh, in the not-so-distant future. And Mr. Mancina is currently viewed as the top prospect in all of baseball. So while I really like the talent in our farm system, uh, there's no question that we've looked at and thought about going after some of the uh, top prospects in all of baseball, and we'll continue to track how those players develop and perform compared to the uh, gems of our farm system, many of whom you can see here back on the list since we're back at our player development page. But now it's time to finish out the season and find out whether the Orioles or the Cubs will be the 2026 World Series champions. And the World Series trophy stayed in the Midwest after uh, two straight World Series championships for the Cleveland Indians. The Chicago Cubs are your 2026 World Series champions, taking out the Baltimore Orioles in six games. And we're now officially at the off season. Uh, we've got a number of option decisions needed. Talk that will likely decline Lucas Giolito. We'll certainly decline Candelario. We may decline Anthony Santander. We may decline Nick Ahmed. Uh, some very bad news here. Our fan loyalty has dropped. We were, I believe, um, pathetic in terms of our fan loyalty, and apparently minimal is worse than pathetic. It's very bad news that's going to influence our budget in a negative way for the future. So um, that definitely stinks, and it's going to make things uh, much more challenging for us. Uh, you can see here I haven't even opened the email yet, but our budget is kept flat at $126 million this year. I guess given that dip in fan loyalty, maybe I can't complain about that. Um, I don't know. It feels a bit harsh for me as we've gotten attendance up pretty significantly since we came on board. And as I noted, um, although we certainly haven't been great, this was a 50-win team uh, the season before we took it over, and we've won 77, 75, and 80. Um, so for uh, things to go so negative so quickly um, is not great. You can see we also got a pretty crappy game score this past uh, 
season as well, which is a little odd to me given the 80 and 82 record, but it is what it is. This is supposed to be an interesting challenge, and it is uh, certainly going to be. Taking a look at the review of the season goals, um, he just wanted us not to stink, so um, he's pleased that we went 80 and 82. Happy that we improved our on-base percentage. Wants us to get a top player. Uh, wants us to continue building up the farm. Wants us to increase fan interest. Wants us to find more international amateur free agents. Uh, still a few years away from his goal of making the playoffs. He's not feeling too confident about us right now. Uh, we've also lost our assistant GM, David Forrest. Uh, we actually knew he was going to be leaving. Didn't feel any need to bring him back. Um, arbitration period is going to begin. Development facilities are open, so there's a lot for us to think about between now and our next episode. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the owner goals for this upcoming season. He wants us to get to 500, so it's no longer um, just being good enough not to suck. Uh, we also need to hit more home runs this year, although that's one that we can discuss, although uh, extending Robert Stevenson at $13 million a year is the alternative, so I think we will likely uh, stick with that low-priority home run goal. Also wants us to get the farm system into the top six this season and improve our fan interest. So we've got some uh, pretty significant goals for this year. Longer term, wants us to acquire a top player, increase attendance, improve our international amateur fines, and long term, get this team into the playoffs. Um, the international amateur fines is kind of a tough one to be given the first year of the game simply because you're picking up 16 and 17 years old players it's a five-year goal you're really not going to have many if any returns at the major league level by these guys when they're 20 21 years old um, so I think that's kind of a more appropriate goal if you get it um, once you're kind of established and you've got some international amateur fines who might be 20, 21 years old in your organization, but it is what it is. Um, the budget stays flat at $126 million. You can see we've been better these three years than the previous two years in Oakland, but um, not good enough, and uh, certainly going to make things interesting to uh, sell tickets and make any money with the fact that our Fan loyalty has taken a step in the wrong direction, which, again, is odd to me because we improved this year, and you can see our attendance over the second half of the year was generally better than it was over the first half of the year. But it is what it is. It's going to be a good challenge here. Um, you can see the payroll is up to $84 million, um, so we've got a lot of interesting decisions to make on some of these option years to get things back in line uh, because we're certainly going to want to be going into next season with more than $8 million in scouting and more than $13 million in player development. So a lot of big decisions ahead for us and the Oakland A's, and we will start uh, tackling some of them in our next episode when the offseason gets underway. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.